Today in IPNS Armory, proper wear of the mask. Okay, so let's talk mask safety. We mean, my mask safety in this case, I mean proper wear of the mask. First, look at a traditional mask, because my saber mask, see, has my name on it. Um, <clears throat> traditional mask has the metal tongue and a horizontal strap. Now, there's some older strap, older masks and non-FIA masks specifically that are, they have the strap about here. And that allows people to put the strap over the tongue like this. That is not where the strap goes. It must go against the back of your head. I had someone in Reddit recently claim that the purpose of the strap over here was to help keep a broken tongue in place. If it's broken tongue, you ain't fencing with it. I'm taking that mask and you're not, not getting it back to the end of the, end of the tournament. That's not what the strap is for. The strap is going against the back of your head to assist the tongue in keeping it on your head. FIE masks, when they came out with this double strap system, uh, move the strap to the bottom of the frame. It has to go under the occipital curve of the back of the head. That's Right here, where the head still dips in, so it gives holding in place. So let me put my mask on, and you'll see that. So you can see, there's a strap. Strap, here's a simple curve of the head, so it's actually under the curve, so it catches the curve. The tongue, ideally, armors I'd see it bend 90 degrees, more importantly, it's actually in contact with the back of my head. It's right here. It's touching my head. It's holding it on. It never moves. So that's fine. A, a night, per, pure 90 degree bend is ideal. It doesn't work on all heads. On mine, it doesn't. Um, but it's enough on it to keep it on my head. So that's how these are worn. Uh, then we come to the Leon Paul Exchange with the contour fit. That's the little plastic yarmulke that fits right in the back of the center back of the head. We had an incident at the Blade Runner this past weekend, 2023, where an exchange mask either came up or off. I didn't see it. I, I don't remember what the head tech said, but it generated a report anyway. The, if you have a Liam Paul exchange and it has the traditional tongue, because they are out there, you do not need the secondary strap. Okay, that started being required end of a uh, couple seasons ago in Minneapolis uh, uh, Nationals. All of last season and this season, regardless of the level of competition, if you have a contour fit, that's the plastic disc exchange mask, you must have the secondary strap. There's no arguments about it. You don't have a strap, you can't fence, it ain't pass. It's gotta be there on the presented at control when you present the mask for checks. This person presented her mask. I don't know which of the three of us checked it. I don't know who it was, who the, who the fencer was, but it passed. You know, we will we'll take the mask and we'll do this bit here to see the Velcro holes that it held. Somehow during the course of the fencing though, three things happened. The Velcro weakened, which is one of the big problems I have with the exchange. The neck strap was looser than it should have been. And instead of wearing the disc where it's supposed to be, she had a hair bun. Now pretend, pretend you're looking at the back of my face right now. The hair bun was here. She should have moved the bun down to the side, up so it points out here, but no. She left the button centered and moved the disc aside where it's not designed to be. So that we could not hold the mask on. And that contributes to the mask coming up. I know that, I know that she was counseled by the head tech because that's a pretty uh, dangerous incident. She was not hurt, nothing happened, but it was a scary situation. Um, and this is not the first time I've seen that. I saw a Div 1 Saber Fencer a number of years ago. This is Anaheim, the knack when the truck rolled over five, six years ago, I think it was now. I had a student fencing in Div 3, and his event was delayed. We watched Div 1, went to watch Monica Askimet, and one of her opponents, <sighs> okay, here's, she had, she had a hair bun right here, the exchange mask. She wore the disc on top of it. So here's the hair bun, here's the disc, right here in the back of her head. It could be barely held on. It was being held on really by the, by the, by the, uh, 
by, I think she had the, I'm not sure she had the neck strap or the horizontal strap, I don't remember, but it was barely being held on. And the ref didn't say anything because the ref didn't catch it. And when the, when the uh, pool was over, because it, it was her last bout, I stepped up to her, I introduced myself, said who I was, more importantly, what I was as an armorer, and told her to wear it properly because it was barely staying on. She looked offended I spoke up. I'm sorry, dear, that's my job. Even though I wasn't event staff, that's my job. Okay, wear the thing correctly. So if you have an exchange mask and you have a hair bun, move it to the side or someplace where it's not going to come in contact with any part of the strapping system. So the disc is in the back, in the center back of your head, like it's supposed to be. I mean, we don't. Nobody wants a nobody wants a Smirnov on their watch. That's why we speak up about this. Sorry, I forgot to put this part in. If you are a referee. This is also part of your job to make sure they wear the gear correctly. Please look at your fencers. If they have the strap over the tongue, fix it. If they have the disc in exchange in the wrong place, fix it. Armors only do so much. Once they get to the strip, that's on your head to get it right if the fencers don't pay attention to it. So refs, please do that part of your job as well. That's how you wear the mask properly. Please do it. Please do it. Please do it. Happy armoring.